Hey, how are we doing guys? Gray here, and today we've got our draft analysis for the BBL Season 8. First off, big thank you to Matt O'Shea for inviting me back into the league. But <clears throat> before we get into the actual draft analysis, I know you can see like half the team. I'm very excited to get into it because I'm really looking forward to using this team. But before we get into this, make sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content, as well as, of course, the BBL season. And subscribe to all the other coaches that are involved in BBL because they are all really great people and deserve your love. So yeah, make sure to go show them, make sure to subscribe to show them some love. Um, yeah, let's get straight into this. Like Before I mess up any more of my intro, um, we'll go ahead and get into this. So Groudon was our first pick. I know last season we picked up Cinderace and Naganadal. So we picked up two sort of S-tier mons, I guess, more so than uh, out-and-out Ubers. Naganadal was absolutely nuts. Um, genuinely ridiculous, carried me through like three games at the end of the season at the very least. And Cinderace was just solid throughout, very, very good. Um, but I wanted like a proper like box art legendary Uber this time, and we were fifth pick. Let me just quickly look at the sheet, it's gonna light up my face for a second. Uh, I'm not even on my team, so um, yeah, I was fifth pick in draft. So <clears throat> With fifth pick, I was unable to pick up things like Xerneas, um, what else was there? Marshadow, I think, uh, Zekrom may have gone beforehand, Lunala definitely did, Lunala ruined me last season, so would have liked to have picked up Lunala. Um, but yeah, we managed to pick up Groudon, and Groudon is something that whenever I faced it, in a very limited amount of Uber's leagues that I've been in, uh, Groudon has always been a massive, massive threat. Like, genuinely one of the hardest things to prep for, because... <clears throat> your water types not as effective as they should be because of the sun that it sets up um it also hits extremely hard with that base 150 attack stat um has great coverage as well using full advantage of that uh that sun with fire moves and the ability to use solar beam as well cut off base one spe uh, 100 special attack it's actually no uh no joke really it's, it's pretty pretty effective and it's bulk generally is pretty good like for i say pretty good base 100 with 140 and 90 in defenses for any other mon would be like incredible like broken levels but uh since it's an uber it's pretty decent it's not bad um base 90 speed is kind of mediocre for an uber but at the same time it's pretty good all round anyway so uh yeah groudon plenty of options for it stealth rock you can run offensive sets you can run more defensive sets um, I think offensive is probably more likely to be seen on Groudon, but it's 150 attack. Even if you run like no attack investment, it's still like what? What's it hit at level 50? Like 200? <laughs> probably not 200. Um, it hits 170. 170 without any investment. Um, 202 without even going adamant. So um, yeah, Groudon is a massive, massive threat, and I want to pick it up and. <clears throat> I'll be honest, wasn't really paying too much attention to what was going, uh, what was still on the board. I just kind of thought of things that would be really good um, to go with Groudon. And of course, we've seen it on the channel recently, but uh, Victini is the thing that came to mind. Like, Victini and Sun hits absolutely just ridiculously hard. Like, Recreate is a nuke. Um, Blue Flare on the special side is a nuke. There's just no way of switching into Victini and Sun. Even if you have a water type, half the time I like you're gonna hit by a solar beam because sun boost uh, sun means it's no one turn. On the physical side, you've got bolt strike. It's just it hits so hard. It's a great pivot as well with U turn. Should I want to run that kind of set? Um, but yeah, it's just a fantastic mon. Victini for me is like one of my all time, if not my all time most used mons. So yeah, I had to pick it up when it fits so nicely on this draft. I just had to do it. Um, next up we've got Rillaboom, and Rillaboom is something that I actually used on my recent PTL season. Um, that's going to be a bit of a common trend, I think, with this team, because Dragonite, the next mon that I'm going to discuss, also was on that PTL team, but this went 9-0 in the regular season. Um, not Rillaboom itself, it actually didn't die all regular season, it only died in playoffs. Um, but yeah, I went 9-0 in the regular season with my team that I had, and uh, I feel like Rillaboom is just a fantastic Pokemon. Uh, base 125 attack. Doesn't seem that amazing, but when you have priority stab, base 80, um, grassy terrain boosted priority, like it, it's just is nuts. <clears throat> Not to mention it's already got like pretty decent bulk, uh, great move pool with uh, moves like knock off, U turn, drain punch. Uh, the wood hammer hits extremely hard in the grassy terrain. 
Um, honestly, one of the best banders just generally in the game. Um, along with like Victini. Victini is also a fantastic band option. Dragonite, fantastic band option. So, yeah, Redaboom, like the <clears throat> the full process between this was like Groudon Victini is probably going to wear down a lot of things. Redaboom could kind of just come in and clean up afterwards. Like banded Grassy Glide, if I manage to get things down to like 50%, will probably like take out the rest of the team. Um, if that doesn't happen, then I've got my next pick being, I'm looking at the wrong screen, uh, being Dragonite. And uh, yeah, Dragonite is <clears throat> a massive, massive threat again. Um, hits a base 80 speed. Like My speed stats at the moment aren't amazing, nothing above base 100, but they're also not slow either. But the fact that I got two lots of priority, I've got very, very bulky Groudon Victini. His bulk is pretty decent as well, and it's a fantastic scarf option. Um, I was feeling like not necessarily speed is too much of an issue, but it's something I want to patch up later because you can see my next two picks are very slow as well. So, um, yeah, Dragonite can be physical or special. It can be uh, like offensive or defensive. It's honestly a very versatile Pokemon. It's the first Defogger I have on this team. Uh, one of very few. I, my re removal isn't amazing, and that would probably bring my team down in anyone's estimations, I guess. But um, to me, it's not the end of the world if I have to run boots. Um, if I go off against teams that have got multiple hazards, then yeah, I'm going to run Defog. Like, <laughs> it, it's fairly simply like if I have to run Defog on Dragonite or on my later picks, then I'll run Defog. Like, I'm not against doing that. But if I can get away without running Defog, then by all means, Dragonite is better not running Defog. But <clears throat> Banded Extreme Speed plus Banded Grassy Glide in PTL just did so much work. So much work between the two of them. If one of them wasn't able to pick up the kill, then the other one was. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. <clears throat> really enjoyed the score in PTL. Uh, partnered with another thing being Magnezone that I also used in PTL. Um, because I just really enjoyed that seat that team that season, I just felt like I really wanted to draft it all. Um, but <clears throat> instead of picking up Starmie, which was my uh, water type on my PTL draft, firstly, I've already got Victini, so I don't want the Psychic type um, to be... Uh, I don't want to double up on Psychic types, especially with no Ghost or Dark Resist at this point. Um, and also, I didn't want a water type that was necessarily going to be hindered by the sun too much. So I picked up Tox Specs because... <clears throat> it's something that doesn't necessarily care whether or not it's doing damage. Its main job is being a bulky uh, pivot with the regenerator ability, incredibly high defenses. It means that it's able to take hits on both sides, like even super effective hits. It doesn't really care too much. Um, it's quite annoying in the ability to like run Scold, Knock Off, Haze, and uh, Toxic Spikes as well. Regenerator means that you can switch it in, take a hit, Switch out to something else, be able to like potentially just gain that health back. It's really, really nice. And yeah, Tox Specs, I wanted if I was having like one set defensive mon, I wanted it to be a good one. And Tox Specs, in my opinion, is one of the best just like out and out defensive Pokemon in the game. So yeah, Tox Specs is just a nice addition. Toxic Spikes, I think, are really nice with my uh, team to this point, um, especially because, in my opinion, uh, like rocks aren't that great. Um, this gen mainly because of boots and things that aren't going to be boots uh, taking such minimal damage that my Riddaboom most likely it's Grassy Surge is going to be able to uh, heal them back up that rocks damage so um, <clears throat> so firstly um, like the opponent has the same benefit however with Toxic Spikes they're going to be doing more damage than Grassy Terrain is going to be able to um, heal back up per turn so that's why I was more wanting a good tox uh, Toxic Spiker than a good Stealth Rocker. I don't care if I don't run Stealth Rocks on Groudon all season. I do have another Stealth Rocker who, in my opinion, is going to be better. But <clears throat> if I can run Toxic Spikes this season and be able to get more benefit from it, then fantastic. Uh, next up, we do have Magnezone. Uh, Magnezone was honestly my MVP of the PTL season just gone, even though I had a nuts team with like multiple different threats. I had Volcarona, I had... Boom, Dragonite, Starmie, uh, Obstagoon. It, it was just like stacked. It had a Crabominable. It had a Cottony. Cottony actually did things that season as well. I kind of wanted Cottony in this draft, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't actually find a way of making it work, so I didn't in the end. Um, but yeah, Magnezone was absolutely fantastic. A really reliable defensive pivot. Um, also hits super hard with Analytic. 
Um, Magnet Pool is a great ability with Dragonite and Rillaboom because neither of them particularly like taking on the steals, um, which is also a reason why I, I drafted those two with Groudon and uh, Victini because those two deal with steel types so well. But just in case, you know, I have a matchup against something that I struggle to be able to take down with those two or don't necessarily want those two um, to have to face, then I've got Magnezone in the back with the Magnet Pool ability, Orlean analytic ability. Could also run sturdy if I fancy running sturdy one week. But 130 special attack, analytic boosted is absolutely no joke. And <clears throat> the Volt Switch is coming for this. If you don't go into your ground type, it's going to be doing so much damage. And I think like my team currently doesn't care too much for ground types or care too much about ground types. So Magnezone was just a perfect partner. Um, and <clears throat> like the only thing that really worried me at this point was... Um, like your special ground types um, or your uh, like some that can run high horsepower or something like that so um, just in case I wanted a second ground immunity and also I wanted like another like or I say another out and out sweeper like I just wanted an out and out sweeper um, <clears throat> that being Holucha Holucha I've partnered with Victini in the past and had great success with um, I think for that one you would have to see IBL D-League I want to say it was IBL that I ran um, Holucha Victini back in 7th gen. Um, it's the first time I've used Holucha since then and also obviously got the the connection of Rillaboom and Holucha, the classic uh, terrain plus Holucha um, combination that you see drafted so often. Um, <clears throat> it was still on the board at round 7, so honestly it would have been rude not to. Um, 118 speed. It's a very good speed tier for this team. I didn't have anything that was above base 100 at that point, so um, I definitely wanted to make sure that I had something that was able to stop base 120s and above from being able to just run adamant or modest and be able to ruin my life. So uh, Holucha does that to an extent. Of course, if people expect it to just be um, like a rain seed, a uh, grassy seed plus uh, unburden, then they're not going to... Uh, necessarily go for the 118 speed but um you'd also be missing out if it doesn't get the boost and then you're suddenly being outsped by the holucha anyway so some people will definitely prep for the base 118 speed it's definitely a good idea to do so and i, I wanted to force a little bit of prep there so holucha fit many of the criteria i also wanted just a strong fighting type and holucha though it's attack stat is only 92 with swords dance um it, it's still able to <clears throat> to do a lot of damage quite reliably and uh yeah holucha gives me that uh, kind of end game sweeper that possibly i'd be lacking if i didn't bring uh Rillaboom or like scarf victini so uh next up we have tyranitar that was still on the board round eight um at this point i had not the greatest ways of dealing with uh ghosts or uh dark types so i wanted to make sure i had a good solid bulkyish dark type because at this point, I desperately needed Tyranitar's typing. I was getting a bit weak to fire. I was getting a little bit weak to, weak to dark and a little bit weak to ghost. Uh, to an extent, a little less so, I guess, to an extent, uh, weak to ice types and weak to um, psychic types. So Tyranitar really does cover a lot of the weaknesses that I am worried about. And also Tyranitar Toxapex has great coverage. Um, and by coverage, I mean uh, defensive synergy. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Um, <clears throat> I mean, technically, they do have great coverage. Tyranitar has fantastic coverage. Uh, Toxpex doesn't have much coverage and doesn't hit hard at all. But uh, Tyranitar does give me... Um, like Between Toxpex and Tyranitar, there's only one weakness, common weakness in, uh, in ground. And I have the grassy terrain, plus I have two flying types. So I'm thinking that maybe ground types aren't the greatest against my team. I might be able to get away with having my defensive core be a little bit weak to ground. Um, it's a little bit risky, but like I said, majority of the ground types that are going to be coming now are going to be special ground types, and Tyranitar is able to take those hits really, really well. Um, on the special side, with base 100 spadef plus the uh, Sandstream to boost its spadef. Um, potential AV as well if I need it. Tyranitar is able to chew a few hits on that special side, and uh, every other weakness that it's got, I'm pretty sure, is covered by Tox Specs. So, <clears throat> yeah, that typing synergy works out really, really nicely. Rounds out my fighting dark psychic core. And I think the only core I've got to finish it off really 
is my Dragonsteel Fairy, which you're going to see I'm picking up Robombi next and filling out that gap. Of course, you see that last Mon, and that last Mon is, and it's not the last Mon on my team, but you, you already knew I had to draft it. Um, so yeah, next up we've got Ravombi. And Ravombi gives me a plus 120 speed tier that I wanted. Um, I believe this speed ties with Modest. I could be wrong on this. It might be one speed lower. But I'm pretty sure this speed ties with Modest Dragapult. And is a little bit, is one point slower than uh, Adamant Zera Aura. I could be wrong on that. I don't fully remember. It's been a little while. But yeah, <clears throat> Ravombi is a really, really fun one. Uh, base 95 special attack doesn't seem that great, but when you actually are able to like set up Quiver Dance or run specs, it does a lot of damage, and Bug Fairy is pretty good coverage. Um, it also gives me a great utility option with things like Sticky Web, Stun Spore, Roman Therapy, Defog. Um, the Bombi can actually fill quite a few roles. It's not the bulkiest by any means, but that speed tier is really nice as a fast Defogger, as a way to cripple a fast offensive threat. Um, as well as being able to kind of set up and win by itself. Like, uh, I had Robombi with uh, Victini. This is going quite a way back to 7th gen, first season of PTL. Um, I had Robombi and Victini. Victini got like 20 kills, and Robombi was still my kill leader. So, yeah, that just kind of goes to show like, Robombi can be really good in certain situations. And uh, with Victini kind of forcing the dark types a little bit more. Um, I felt like Rabombi was a really nice pickup to be able to offensively threaten them. Would have liked to have a bulky fairy, but at the same time, uh, the bulky fairies that were any good, in my opinion, had all gone. So I just went with Rabombi. Went fast, offensive, a mon that I'm familiar with. And uh, speaking of mons we're familiar with, you know we had to do it to them. Uh, we're picking up Greedon. Uh, of course, Greedon is becoming like a played out thing on my channel. But this mon is still so good. It's just so good. Uh, base 120 HP with 95 defense, 75 speed def, super, super bulky, 95 attack. Like I said, with Bombi's special attack, 95 is actually usable. And especially if it's using Swords Dance to uh, boost that attack, <clears throat> suddenly it becomes a threat. Belly Drum, it's becoming a big threat. Um, <laughs> Jario Balls from this hurt like a stab move would. Um, body Slam, great for paras. Its general coverage is actually very good. It's able to hit like four times effective mons most of the time. Uh, like uh, Seed Bomb and Ice Fang, Fire Fang. Able to like basically hit all those kind of prominent four times weaknesses um, that appear in the game. So yeah, Green is always a really nice option. It has the ability to run Body Press with uh, like Stuffed Cheeks as well and Stockpile. You've seen so many Green sets. If you've watched my channel, uh, since like the start of 8th gen, you know what Greedon can do. Greedon can do many, many things. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using it once again, as I always do. It's always just a, a great like mon to have on the team. Very kind of splashable. And uh, yeah, it's Greedon. I had to. You just know I had to. Uh, then last pick, it came around to me. And uh, honestly, I had a bit of an ice type weakness. And a bit of a, uh, not fire type weakness, a bit of a flying weakness. So, I thought the best way to kind of counteract that is to have um, an ice type to cover the ice type weakness, and also it gives me a water immunity. Uh, it's the second water type on the team, but again, I feel like Lapras doesn't necessarily rely on its water stab particularly to get it by. Um, and just having the ability to uh, have ice shard as well gives me another priority options against things like uh, Garchomp, Landorus, um, all those kind of four times weaknesses. On the ice types. Um, yeah, Lapras probably won't be coming many weeks. Um, I doubt it will turn up to too many games, but at the same time, it is able to do a job and it does that job, job pretty well. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've never used Lapras before. I'm excited to use it. And uh, that's going to be the team. Like, uh, I'm really happy with how this draft came out. I think it does have some weaknesses. I forgot to click on Tog Base and now I can't hit it. Um, it it's going to be a fun team. Effectively, this is just going to be a lot of fun, I think, to use. Uh, Toxpex being really like the only out and out defensive mon. I guess my two water types are my most defensive. But um, yeah, I'm excited to use this team. A lot of things on this that I've wanted to use for a while, I have used and had a lot of fun using. And then there's a Groudon. There's just <laughs> Groudon being my Uber. There's some terrifying teams that we're going to be up against. But um, yeah, this should be a lot of fun to build with. If you're excited for the season, Make sure to please leave a like, show your support. It's greatly appreciated. I know the channel has been dead for about a month, but 
it's about to come back and hopefully come back in a big way as long as I'm able to consistently record, which I'm really planning to do. Now I've sorted out my uh, sleeping schedule, my work schedule is a little bit better. I'm really, really thinking that I can pull out like four or five uploads a week, maybe. I know that's a high bar, but if you like and subscribe, maybe you'll see that I, I would do that. I, that's a very kind of fucking YouTuber thing to say. I hate that I just said that. But still, subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of the season, at the very least. And uh, yeah, like I said at the start of the video, make sure to show your support to all the other coaches in the BBL. And uh, yeah, until the next one, have a great day, guys. Peace.